Every single year when a new FIFA releases, I see players making the exact same mistakes. And in some cases, most of the mistakes that you're making are just going to cost you a couple hundred coins here or there. But there are some much bigger mistakes that players are making, which are costing thousands, potentially even hundreds of thousands. So the best way to avoid them is for me to highlight them within this video. But before we do get into the video, if you're looking to get some very easy coins, then there is no better place the mule factory head over there to get yourself some cheap fast fifa 23 coins completely reliable and if you use fanatic 5 at checkout you'll also get yourself a five percent discount link can be found in the description down below getting back into the video i'm really hoping that by highlighting these 10 common mistakes then it will be easier for you to avoid them so the first mistake is having all of your coins in just one player this is normally done in two different ways the first way is that you've built up your coin balance by playing matches going through various game modes or trading and your sole motivation for this is to eventually push to a big player let's say someone like Mbappe, Ronaldo, Messi, Salah anyone like this and once you finally built up enough coins that is when you buy into them but you buy into them with there not being enough coins to improve the rest of your team so you have pretty average players the other way in which you could be in this position is if you did get lucky you open the pack and you manage to get someone which is tradable, which is much better than what you currently have in the rest of your team. Whichever way you got into this situation, it is best to either not do it or it's better for you to sell that player on so that you can spread those coins evenly to improve your team across the whole starting 11. The second mistake, not completing the advanced SBCs. Now these SBCs have less attention on them this year just because they're untradeable. Whereas before we was able to go from them and get tradable rewards and we was able to make a very good amount of profit especially if you are able to complete these challenges for cheap but now that they are untradeable there's loads of players in the community that just don't see the point in going through them but these can still give you some very good players players which you can use as part of future sbcs or likely they can actually be used in your team these are still good rewards so spend some time going through the hybrid leagues hybrid nations and league and nation hybrid 12 challenges in total and you can use a site such as footwiz or footbin to to see how other players have completed this SBC so you don't need to actually do it all by yourself. The third mistake is using your initial coins right at the beginning to buy players for your team. There's so many players which will start ultimate team, head over to a game mode such as squad battles, play for a game, earn about 500 to 700 coins and then immediately use those 500 to 700 coins to buy into a player. They'll then stick that player into their team and go into the next game to do the exact same thing and they keep this on repeat. This is the slowest way for you to build your first team. You will eventually reach a coin boost which you can claim from your seasonal rewards and this certainly does help but you're still going to have to do this several times before you can get a full rare gold start in 11. It's so much better to go into that squad battles game claim those 500 to 700 coins and then use those coins to start opening other revenue sources by actually trading if you then buy one or two players which you can then list onto the transfer market then you go into your next squad battles match and by the time that's finished hopefully those players have sold on and also you get the extra coins from the squad battles match itself you keep this going eventually you're going to have more and more coins to trade with which leads to you making more and more coins every single hour the fourth mistake, using your foot moments loan players for games, whether it be division rivals, squad battles, or even foot champions, and then just quick selling them once you're done. I've already had messages where there's been several people doing this. Right now, there is a foot moment story, which is called Rise of Mbappe. And for it, you need to have Mbappe within your starting 11. Now, this would be a ridiculous requirement if you had to go and buy them. You don't. You just head over to the foot gallery and there is a free times option for you to get a loan Mbappe for one game. This costs absolutely nothing, but once you do redeem him all three times, you can have three matches with Mbappe, but then he's gone. You cannot claim him again. The idea is that you will then place Mbappe in your team and go through the foot moment challenges because every time you go through one of these challenges, it doesn't take away your contracts. 
so you really can keep on playing through every single challenge with the lone Mbappe that you have. But there's been quite a lot of people who then instantly go over to divisions, foot champions, or squad battles, use them within those games, and because you're using them in an actual game, his contracts will go down. And for most people, once they have a player with zero contracts, there's no real reason for you to keep them, so they discard them. This year, that's a mistake. You should probably avoid quick selling players because there's a chance that they can be used at some point within the future through one of these foot moment challenges. And if it is a big player such as Mbappe, the only way you're going to complete these challenges now is if you get another lone Mbappe or if you do get extremely lucky to either pack him or just build up enough coins to buy him. The fifth mistake is not trading. Now with this, you do not need to do the most advanced trading methods ever. Here on this channel, we cover the basics. If you just get one or two basic trading methods that you know you can use for 90% of the time, you're then able to generate a lot more coins than if you just depended on playing matches and your weekly rewards. For me to earn five, 700 coins from matches, I need to play a game which takes about 15 to 20 minutes, whether or not that is online or single player. But for me to earn that through trading can take literally just a couple minutes. Number six, not investing. Yet again, similar to our previous points, you do not need to do some crazy investing method. You can keep it extremely basic. If you just keep up to date with fodder investing where you're investing into players above 83 rated as long as they're cheap and also you're investing into team of the weeks every single week just before a new one is released then you're going to be in a very good position we've actually got a video already on the channel where i go much more in depth with this to show you exactly what you should be buying into on a weekly basis so if you do want to see that there is a link in the description down below and number seven not learning the OP game mechanics. Every single year, there's something completely new that's OP. And even though there is an argument for certain types of players that say they want to play realistic football instead of abusing OP game mechanics, you're guaranteed to come up to someone at some point that's going to be using these game mechanics against you and it's just going to frustrate you when you're just trying to play realistic football. This is a game at the end of the day, and there's always going to be an overpowered way to play. If you want to win more games and be able to have a much better team, a much better ultimate team, more coins, and overall a much better experience, it's worth taking some time to learn some of the OP mechanics, whether that's the best way to score goals, whether that's the best way to create chances, or maybe it's just a case of finding the skill moves which are the easiest to do, but the most effective to do. And number eight, not taking advantage of known meta players. This is a mistake that I used to make all the time because I always wanted to base teams around my favorite players within real life, but my favorite players in real life didn't actually suit the OP game mechanics within game, kind of linking back to our previous point. So I would always go for players which I enjoyed watching, but they didn't have pace, so they never worked well within Ultimate Team. FIFA 23 is so well documented that there's so many communities out there which tell you exactly what players to use. And just because everyone is using them doesn't mean that you need to go out and find something to counteract that. Just use the exact same players, put them in your ultimate team. Of course, change some of the players around them to fit something that you want to be playing with. But you're gonna have a much better experience when you're using players that everyone knows to be overpowered. The good thing with this is that there won't just be one or two players there's still going to be hundreds of players out there so you still have quite a lot of options for what you can use for your team the ninth mistake and this is very in particular this year is players not valuing chemistry it is ironic that since fifa 09 players have always said that if they just removed chemistry from the game you will be able to build much better teams you'll be able to build your ultimate team and i am someone that believed in that idea and finally, FIFA 23 is the year where EA did change chemistry. They haven't removed it. It's still within the game, but they changed it so that you can have a player on zero chem and they're still going to be playing at least what their base stats are. This gives a lot more freedom for you to build your ultimate team because you no longer need to link players directly. They can be linked across the whole starting 11. And for a lot of people this year, they're just throwing in any type of player within their starting 11, which is 
fine to do so but just remember that those that are also looking at chemistry they might not have as good of players but if they do have free chem on every single one of their players 30 free chem in total they're gonna be boosted there's gonna be a much higher boost on those players because they've went the extra mile to get chemistry for those players so i've already came up to many teams which are far better than mine but those teams didn't value any chemistry whatsoever and if they did it was only one or two here or there whereas my team which isn't as good it's still okay but it isn't anything compared to what i've been playing against i valued chemistry across every single one of my players they all have free chemistry in total so this boosts their stats now there will be a point in which i don't value chemistry as much and that is once i do have much better players but even then it's still something worth considering it's not completely taken out of the game it still has an impact and it's worth taking some time just to figure out who's going to link with who just so that you can get the very best out of your players and the final mistake is not keeping up with content creators now if you've made it all the way to this point of this video and you are not subscribed then you should probably subscribe because we're trying to give you as much information as possible so that you can have the very best experience in ultimate team but if you have made it all the way to this point in this video and you don't like me it's perfectly fine make sure that you are following someone else within the community and it's recommended to follow someone that is an expert in what you want to get better at so for B, I'm fine with how I trade. I'm not the best trader ever, but I don't really see the need to go and watch other traders. But I am very, very bad at gameplay and I want to get better at gameplay. So I will watch some of the pro players that have YouTube channels and see what they're up to, what they're recommending players to do and how they're playing so that I can hopefully use what they're teaching to better improve myself when it actually comes to playing in game. If you do want to learn to trade, we go over basic trading methods here and there are a lot of other traders out there which will show you more advanced trading methods. Or maybe you don't want to do any of that and you just want to stay up to date with the latest news and the latest changes. There's a lot of people out there covering the latest news. There's even quite a few people who share the latest leaks. And this can really help you get an edge over everyone else to know exactly what is coming in ultimate team if you find out that an sbc is releasing way before anyone else you can easily invest into those types of players that are going to be needed and you can make a very good amount of profit so it's definitely worth being part of a number of different fifa communities anyway guys here are just 10 of the common mistakes that i see players making within fifa 23 now that you know these mistakes it should be a lot easier for you to avoid them if you do have any questions about anything then please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below but anyway guys i hope you guys did enjoy if you did enjoy don't forget to leave a like and subscribe but for now i'm going to see ya